Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. Proverbs chapter 11. We'll read from the third verse. Proverbs, that's right out of the Psalm. Psalm chapter 11, verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, but the perverseness of transgressors shall destroy them. Turn with me to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. When you get home, read those first 13 verses again. A very familiar passage, but I'm just going to read them for brevity, starting at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body. And then finally, let's look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, starting at verse 15. Well, let me start at 14. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. And if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. For a few moments, I'm going to talk from the subject, ideal integrity. Ideal integrity. Sin. Yeah. 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 But 
the interpreter means I don't mind confessing the sins I do commit. I'm not, I'm not trying to be something that I'm not. Like, like folk call, keep it in real. Yeah. So, and so when you start talking about integrity, uh, integrity is something that we are short of nowadays. All right. Because people always want to mislabel and relabel stuff. And so folk are confused about what real integrity is. Yeah. I shared in my, my study group, I was walking around the track and one of these Highland Park citizens came and he didn't know poor fella, he didn't know who he was talking to. And uh, the flag came up, the flag came up, you know, and he wanted to convince me that uh, we ought to keep the flag, you know. The Confederate flag, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, showing me how it's, it's, it's historical and it has all kinds of things. I said, poor fella, he don't know what he's talking about. I said, I said, well, you know, see like to me, uh, it kind of represents just the opposite to us. Yeah. It represents racism, prejudice. Yeah. It brings into mind a whole lot of negativism. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, everybody don't feel that way. I said, well, yeah. I'm kind of reminded of what y'all did. Uh, President Obama's pastor. Mm -hmm. You took a man's name and you slandered it. They took an excerpt from one of his sermons right. and they villainized him and they would not rest until they required Amen. Senator Obama to disassociate himself Amen. from his past. Yeah. And I said, the problem I got with y'all, nobody's disassociating themselves from that flag. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't talk about it. See, that's what we need to learn as people. You know, you know, if you're going to use those kind of standards, use them across the board. And I, and I, so you can't have one set of rules over here and get another set of rules over there. And I think okay, you can't blame white folks for that because, you see, they require more of us than we require of them. Some of y'all are so busy trying to be accepted. Come on. You lost your integrity. So I want to lift up today this idea of integrity in its truest sense. I mean, I've mentioned that that's all in one area. Integrity addresses us at every level. And, and if you can find integrity anywhere, you should be able to find integrity in the church. Uh, Sadly enough, that's one of the places that is more desecrated. Yeah. I mean, folk will get in church and lie as quick as some of these politicians. Yeah. 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 Lady, lady came up to me Sunday afternoon, uh, next to say, uh, when, when they passed that law to let gays get married. They said, yeah. Aren't you disappointed in your president that he would allow for that? I said, No. She said, Fine. I said, Well, I don't look to politicians for my morality. When I'm looking for my morals, I go to God's word. You can't look to a politician to be your moral compass. The very word politician means compromise. And when you're a child of God, there are some things you can't compromise. The child of God is not running for a popularity contest. I wish I had a witness. You don't do what the majority wants. You do what God wants. Oh, yeah. So I'm listening to this thing, and then uh, we were we studying this the other day, and uh, uh, Adolf asked a question, and, and I think it kind of raised some, some eyebrows. But, but have you ever? been hurt at church. Yeah. Has somebody ever told you something? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Has somebody ever done something really low down? Yeah. Folk can get scandalized, lied on, talked about at church faster than you will in a whole lot of cases. Yeah. But they are there to ask that question, and, and 
he lifted up those verses in Philippians where Paul talked about this matter of the same thing. Paul said we ought to be about the same thing. What's he talking about? Everybody in church ought to be the same. Yeah. I was sharing with the group uh, Wednesday, uh, church, uh, I mean, the uh, preacher was over our ministers group in Beaumont when I was over pastoring over there. He said, all the pastors should be preaching the same thing. Wow. That was a general statement, but his, his focus, Sister Jordan, was that he believed women should not wear pants. Wow. And that the young pastors ought to be preaching the same thing. <laughs> Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, this tight, but it's right. I don't think Paul is saying we ought to be the same. No, no. In fact, I lifted up that passage out of, 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 of Ephesians 4. That's one of my favorite unity passages. But when you look at that, he says we're all a part of the same body. One Lord. Yeah. One faith. Yeah. One baptism. Yeah. Y'all don't hear me. In other words, 
when the spirit of God is in me, yeah. I'm not allowed to do what I want to do. Come on, I got a higher calling than that. When the spirit of God is in me, I'm not allowed to have just my will. When the spirit of God is in me, when I call myself a Christian, if I dare call myself a child of God, it's because I'm a child of God. The spirit of God Choices. Yes, 
you have an option. I told you, God talks to everybody. But you choose whether you want to hear him or not. God ain't gonna grab you. God has the power. He don't need a hand to grab you by the collar. God can just say, stop. And when God says stop, you better hope he don't stop talking. See, when God says stop, you want to say, God, tell me what you want to stop by. See, stop can mean a lot of stuff. It can mean stop walking. It can mean stop talking. It could mean stop living. <laughs> A choice. A church family. As a church family, we have a choice. You choose whether to live according to the rules and regulations of God or to do your own thing. Talked a few weeks ago about the idea that, that God is the one who grows a church. But that same passage over there in chapter 2 of Acts, the same passage that said God grows the church. He said, but then they had certain things going on. They had good worship. They had good fellowship. They had good ministry. They had good discipleship. And they had good evangelism. I wish I had a witness. See, you can't let go on your part and expect God When, 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 when Elijah went on Mount Carmel and he was praying for rain yes. and God answered by fire oh we love miracles yes. everybody want a miracle yes. but you want to leave out that part that happened three and a half years before yes. see three and a half years before Elijah says the Lord told me to tell you it's not going to rain He said when he got on one corner, he said, Y'all need to choose this day. Yeah, next one. somebody. Yeah. Whom you will serve. Yeah. Yeah. See, the problem was Israel had turned to idols. Yeah. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. But they thought they're still the chosen people. And all you folk right there, how about how good and holy Israel is? Y'all need to check y'all yeah. Read the Bible. God ain't give no pass card to anybody who's in Israel. Yeah. We read the Bible said the new. Of the children of Abraham. Y'all ain't having the kind of devil you're gonna call somebody chosen who don't even accept Jesus as the Christ. Y'all better hear me today. See, you do understand that because that there are stipulations to you being God's people. If you abide by my commands, he told Solomon, if you keep 